So five or six months ago, I was perusing through this website called Musicbed, which is a website that I find the music to use on these videos. And I stumbled across an artist named Indoor Cat, which is the music you just heard playing right before I started talking. And it uh, captured my attention. I thought it was super duper cool. It has like this sort of composed orchestral like arrangements and but then it's like sampled and turned into a beat with uh, looping and it's, it's just so cool. So anyway, I reached out, I've looked this person up, Indoor Cat, and it was a guy named Jacob Fania. I found his Instagram, he had these reels of how he actually, you know, showing him doing like performances of these tracks and they were awesome. I reached out to Jacob and we set up a studio tour. So I got to go and check out all of the, the stuff in his it's actually a very simple home studio setup uh, and yeah it was super cool i got to hear some of the new stuff he's working on see how he puts together some of the tracks what he uses it was a lot of fun so thank you jacob for having me over just like every studio tour i'll put links to jacob his projects indoor cat secret twin he has a bunch of different projects link down in the description go give him a follow check it out it's very very fun great music it's on spotify and everything else as well and as usual the studio tour is sponsored by sweetwater so thank you guys for sponsoring the video I'll I want to shout out some stuff that you wouldn't expect to find on sweetwater.com. This is the first item. It is actually a live streaming camera switcher, not just for live streaming, but for, um, you know, recording, filming stuff. If you're trying to do content as someone in a studio or a songwriter, artist, everyone's trying to do content. You can actually get products on Sweetwater for making content like hard drives. I don't know if you... I didn't really know that they sold hard drives on Sweetwater. They have cameras, like actual content creation gear so that was fantastic we just picked this up because we started a podcast if you didn't know i haven't posted the first episode but they're going to be coming up very soon already filmed uh, i'll put a link to that channel down below it is a totally separate channel called andrew masters podcast so if you want to go subscribe to that you can uh see it's going to be uh it's going to be pretty fun if you're thinking about starting a podcast or making your own content or anything if you didn't know now you can find that stuff at sweetwater.com thank you sweetwater for sponsoring this video and if you haven't picked it up yet the studio kit drum sample one shot and loops pack linked at the top of the description we are actually using it on a couple projects that i'm not filming a whole lot of but it has been super fun putting together tracks using those drum samples and if you have them film whatever you're working on with it send it to me on instagram and tag me so i can share it it's really been awesome seeing the stuff that you guys are making with it anyway let's go check out jacob's studio setup this is such a vibe in here yeah so as i was saying before this is like the exact same dimensions of the room that i was working in before it's a garage. <laughs> it's a single <laughs> stall. Is this like a 50s house? It's early 70s. Early, oh, okay, yeah. nice. So no asbestos, I think. All right, hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, I've been a big fan of the stuff that you've been making um, on Musicbed, nice. Usi literally using them in these videos. Tell me a little bit about putting this room together. How long have you been in here? We bought the house in 2019, about six months of working in a bedroom, getting this space ready. Uh, so I've been in, in here for uh, just a few years. This is just my little cave. Jokingly call it the sunroom <laughs> because it has no windows. These fake plants are thriving. Yeah, yeah man, <laughs> that's the trick. It's really well laid out for Thank the you. size. It's... And it's cool to see this, this horizontal version of the room. I don't know how many people watching this will uh, be typing, it's on the wrong wall. <laughs> you gotta go long ways. And I know, but this just uh, made more sense. Nobody has complained about my mixes. Heck yeah. <laughs> you got a lot of good treatment going on in here too. Yeah, these are, thank you. These are the uh, DIY, the gray and the clouds, which I'll never do again. And then all the black ones are from the folks at uh, Music City Acoustics. And then we've got the, there's a bass trap, because uh, this is just a fireplace. Mm -hmm. uh, so just a giant reflective thing. And so I got a little, little bass trap back there. And then this was a tapestry that we had got from a, uh, a pretty crunchy shop up in uh, Cleveland. But when we were first married, we had it you know, on our bedroom wall, decided to take it down. And so I turned it into a little panel. Before this, we were in 
a different house in town renting in a big room. 20 something by 20 something at that point, especially when you're renting, there's only so much you can do with treatment. So moving to a smaller space, I, I think I would prefer after this space to even have a smaller space. So I like having everything as close to arm's length as possible. Have a thought, turn around, grab the thing, put it in the computer. Tell me, like, I know you have a handful of different projects and just things that you do as a musician, composer. Tell the world in this beautiful camera here. How are you using all this stuff? This is gonna be very relatable to a huge amount of people who watch this video and I think they'd be surprised to know everything you do with it. I do a number of projects, all kind of with their own flavor. Primarily, I have a project called Indoor Cat, which is kind of an instrumental, lo-fi adjacent type of project. I want to make happy music mm -hmm. and Indoor Cat is a good outlet for me to do that. And then I have uh, just a, another instrumental project just under my own name that is just more ethereal and uh, spacey. I have a project with a good friend, Andrew DeTorres, called Secret Twin that is all sorts of folky, anthemic, stomps and claps, yeah. goodness. I've been working with Mahaffey and crew uh, down at, in Murfreesboro are composing for children's animation, which has been just a crazy inspiring and challenging. It's been a, a huge period of growth for me in a way that hopefully will be received well and, you know, not just another variation, but that's been super fun. So just kind of doing a little bit of everything, kind of necessary Yeah. these days. If you can find things that don't burn you out, that, mm -hmm. you know, is a, is super valuable. A lot of times it's just me in here making kids, <laughs> kids music or beats. Check out this rig here. First off, what desk is this? Cause this thing is pretty, uh, this, this pretty was, big. yeah, this was my, uh, present to myself after, you know, 15 years of having desks that were either scrounged from the side of the road or things that I had built myself. Is it AZ workstations? I'm doing a very poor shout out right now. <laughs> but seriously, shout out this desk. It, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, standing. It's a standing desk, which I need to That's make use great. of more often, but it's great. It's like my first big boy desk and I couldn't be happier. But absolutely super recommend uh, these guys. Very friendly email communication. That's nice. How, uh, do you remember how much it was? I want to say this finish, I think was an extra hundred bucks. And mm -hmm. I think after it was all said and done, shipping and tax, it was something around like 2,500. Oh, okay, cool. Um, nice. What kind of computer is this? This is the M1 Max. It was another present to myself. <laughs> is it the 16? Uh, it's 14? a six, 16 inch, um, which I leave it display down most of the time so I don't get to look at that yeah. incredible display. But that's the full RAM. I think it's four terabytes Ooh. of internal. Internal. Holy cow. I got it this summer and it was when they were having a ton of like uh, stock issues. Delays, yeah. This was the only one that they had. Oh, okay. And it was the exact config that I was looking for. Walked in and I was like, sell me your MacBook Pro. <laughs> the one that you have, I will take it, please. I had a iMac, a 2020 before this, and it was such a surreal thing going from a desktop-ish style machine to a fully mobile machine. And I just got the Apollo X4 from our friends at Sweetwater. I okay. had the X6 uh, for a little bit. Rather than having a, a studio rig and a travel rig, I was like, man, I'm just gonna get the X4 and I can have both. Yeah, no pre's. I had the, the Townsend mic uh -huh. for a minute and I loved that thing. I just needed something that could manage um, sounds in the environment a little bit better mm -hmm. than a, just any sort of condenser mic. So I ended up picking up the little SM7. We, we have a toddler and this Oh yeah, you got to set up for her. We've heck yeah. <laughs> well, just for her uh, running around the house and making noise, and this yeah. this room is right off the kitchen. There's a lot of life that happens right outside this door. Yeah. And so being able to have something like the SM7B 
in this environment is super useful. This what, is, what is this little station? What's going on? This is, uh, let me actually, <laughs> I forget what this app is called. It's called Metagrid Pro. For a while I was using the Logic Control app, okay. but this Metagrid Pro, seriously shout out to them. The app is I think 20 or 30 bucks and basically it can do whatever you need it to do. Mm -hmm. So right now I have it set up to you know control uh, as a as a fader control for channels oh sick but then just key commands you know normally you would press some combination of three or four sure that you can just now have easily accessible for things like having a new tempo for composing yeah. this having this type of stuff is super useful and then i've got key switches that are sending out the uacc uh key switches uh for uh, a lot of Spitfire in instruments. I think that that's what they had implemented to kind of unify all of their different libraries by using a CC message with velocity within that CC message mm -hmm. instead of having like a note on the keyboard. Um, it sends out these CC uh, messages for key switches. So I just have them right here. Nice. Um, and then these will also control articulations. The new Logic update, I am so excited because you can put uh, stacks in stacks Wow! in this update. So it keeps everything so, so organized. And because they're all stacks, they're not folders, these all act as buses. So I can actually have, uh, you know, bus EQ on all four of these, you know, string. So Logic has a really great way of handling articulations that instead of using key switches you can have these articulation sets so instead of having key switches i can set these notes i can highlight them right here mm -hmm. set them to pizzicato and then these notes right here i want them to be long and then this note right here i want it to be pizzicato again and then that's it so you just hit nice and that's it that's uh, so cool. And then, you know, you do your uh, expression here. These guys, I have to shout these folks out. This is from a uh, company uh, called Intech. Whoa. And it's just a group of uh, kids in their 20s 3D printing these cases. They all snap together. Yeah, I was going to say, are, is it the modular ones? Yes. Oh, and then it's so ready cool. to go. <laughs> that's so cool. Just having a, something that can do expression that is clean, not over-designed. Mm -hmm. it, I can put it in a bag and they are super, they're affordable too. They're like 120 or 130 for those guys. And uh, yeah, in tech. So yeah, this is right now that I'm definitely set up for more composing with all the key switches. And then I've got my little uh, beat station. <laughs> guy here with the launch pad and I've gone through a whole journey of little beat making devices and trying to figure out what is going to be the best solution for my own workflow. Yeah. And I'm real happy with the with the launch pad. Yeah, I mean, so like that's another thing people should go and follow you on Instagram because the little videos you post of you actually putting together these tracks and performing them. I mean, when I hear the music, quite frankly, I'm like what is happening? How is he doing this? Because it's it's kind of like there's like a traditional sense of composing and then it feels like you take an arrangement and then you like almost turn it into a beat. Yes. Yeah. It's um. And I'm like, what? How are you doing that? And, it, and it's all all in the box, which, of course, you know, nowadays more than ever, you, you can you have so much power and there's so many cool VSTs and ways to do it. But I'm, I'm like, literally, how are you doing this? Yeah. It, it's uh, everything, like you said, is in the box except for uh, guitars. Mm -hmm. uh, so acoustic, buke. I've got my Mustang bass and a, a little Frank and Telly. This is a uh, 96, I think. Uh, made in Japan, uh, Mustang oh, bass. Beautiful. I love this thing so much. And then this is a, uh, a Frank and Telly. This is a 85 Japanese Strat neck. Whoa. So it plays like a Strat. Oh, cool. Um, but then it's sort of like a Tele Deluxe with the two humbuckers, mm -hmm. which I have no idea what the pickups are. Uh, it has a coil tap oh, right cool. here, so I can go to single coil. Uh, and then just a three-way switch. 
Uh, so it's a very, it looks like it wants to play heavy music. Yeah. And it absolutely never gets the opportunity to do that. <laughs> but that's kind of it. I have the one guitar, I have the one bass, the one acoustic. They all do exactly what I need them to do. And just watching a bunch of uh, your uh, videos and seeing all the incredible spots, uh, especially just to, around town. I've got two musicians across the street that I, I was just saying how I don't generally consider myself a musician. Which is crazy. Well, just in the sense of, you know, you are in a town like this sure. where the the bar is so high. And I think for some people that can be intimidating. And I, I think for me, it like goes back and forth between being intimidating and very inspiring. Just that there's yeah. so much talent in a town like this. Cause I, like I grew up playing guitar and drums, but uh, when people ask me like, what do you play? I go, well, yeah. <laughs> I play guitar and drums and bass and little keys, but I've only ever been paid to play drums. Well, that's, and I've, <laughs> I'll tell people, if people ask me that, I, I will, what do you play? I will say, I wouldn't pay my, I wouldn't hire myself. Yes. To play anything that sure. I play. Um, and so, yeah, it's, you know, kind of a little guitar, a little bass, a little whatever. I, I definitely consider like the computer to be. Your instrument? The instrument, I think. Heck yeah. Growing up, uh, you know, you're, you start your band in junior high school. And sure. Growing up in the Midwest, Warp Tour yeah, yeah, was yeah. the, there the wasn't anything higher. Yeah. <laughs> but we just, yeah, friends started their, we all were in our little bands and, you know, then it comes time, well, maybe we should make an EP. Maybe we should get, a, mm. get some demos made. Yeah. And, you know, friends started going to some dude's house, some dude in, you know, suburban Ohio. You in see their a garage. 003 rack or something? Oh, dude, yeah. Or the, the little pod, the little yeah. bean. Oh, yeah, yeah. I started seeing, you know, friends going and spending 500 bucks, a thousand bucks, getting some shitty demos made. And I think I was just like, man, I feel like I could make my own shitty demos. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, if, yeah. in here, like, genuinely like, just hearing the stuff, and it was like, man, this doesn't sound good. <laughs> I feel like I could make stuff that sounds. Equally. Just as yeah. not good, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I could do it whenever I wanted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I saved up like 500 bucks and got like a PowerBook G4. Nice. That, uh, you know, smells like <laughs> crayons. I don't know what they smelled like, but those old PowerBooks had a, had a smell to them. Yeah. And so that's kind of where it, it started, where I was just like, I, if, every, but if everybody's making bad sounding stuff, well, then I can make some <laughs> Bad sounding stuff for sure. Well, you're uh, being you're being ridiculously modest because the the stuff you make sounds fantastic and ah uh, oh, thanks. You know you do have a really great combination of tools. I mean we didn't even get into any of this stuff. Yeah. Um, this is a new fascination of me. Yeah. Or of mine, which you have like the analog, legitimate, sequential Juno 106. What is this one? The Matriarch. Yeah, this is the the Moog Matriarch. I think that this is an instant classic. I think in 30 years years people are going to be uh clamoring for these things um, oh yeah just in the in the same way that a uh you know an original prophet five or a you know just anything from that era or the, <laughs> the jupiters that now are yeah oh yeah like, cost as much as a new car yeah this juno i got it in a trade i traded a uh an op1 for oh this wow juno, just straight up nice. and that ended up being a good trade um definitely Everything works well on it? Everything works really well. I've had it serviced. Um, it's clean. By, yeah, a guy in town, Ben, uh, Odd Frequency is his uh, username on Instagram. And he, super nice guy, super knowledgeable. Uh, and he took it apart and basically everything that can be brand new on the Juno is, I think mm -hmm. with a couple exceptions, but all the chips are new, I think. Uh, even like all the <laughs> all the faders are new. Oh, nice. Uh, so it's a, in real good shape. And uh, yeah, this Matriarch got really recently just for its the, the fact that it's paraphonic and you can get just very interesting chords out of a synth that's paraphonic where each voice is tuned to a different octave. Yeah. There's a lot of like unexpected fun to it that I have found kind of difficult to do in the box. Yep. And so I'm, I'm real happy with uh, with that matriarch. Yeah, it looks super duper fun. And the profit's yeah. the profit. The pro you know, it's, it sounds good. I know, people, 
when, I mean, my studio is a little stupid because it's just super overkill. Like my thing right now is I wanna expand my IO even more so that I can have 32 simultaneous inputs plus an extra eight, but it's like, yeah, uh, they're all full right now mm -hmm. at 22 and I only have two keyboards. You gotta get more. Well, so this is sweet because the, the Apollo mm -hmm. has four ends that are like combo pre in line. And then it has ADAT, but it doesn't have, <clears throat> it doesn't have a um, BNC clock. It doesn't have a word clock. Yeah. So if you have an external pre, you have to use that pre's clock. You yeah. can't, yeah, yeah. unless it has ADAT in and out, I think, yeah, where yeah, you yeah. can Expand. send it both ways. So, so what I did is, you know, one and two is mic and guitar, and then three and four is just keys. And so I have everything patched, so these, 18 and 19 are my ins for uh, the interface. Oh, nice. And then I've got the Rev 2, I've got the Juno, and I've got the Moog yep. in mono. And so... Excellent cable yeah. management. I, I didn't <laughs> quite notice it until I'm down yeah. here, but oh, everything yeah. looks very, very nice. Try to get it. I, literally, I spent a couple hours because you were coming over. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> well, it's it like looks I, great. Great work. Gotta make it look... Gotta make it look good. So here's Rev 2. Yep. And then if we wanted to hear the Juno. Boom. Now we've got the Juno. Doesn't that feel good to It you? feels amazing. But everything is hooked up with MIDI, so it's all passed through. Uh-huh. So I can come over here, set my patch, you know, figure out what I need, you know, the, the sound that I need. Mm -hmm. And then because it's all MIDI, I can come over here then and put it in as MIDI. Quantize, because a keyboard player I am not, and, uh, and then just hit record, and then boom, everything goes in, and I'm good to go. So pumped on that. It's, yeah, having a, like, continuously, was it Kaizen, that you're just continuously Improving. finding improvements yes. with everything. It can be, you can get lost in it. You can absolutely yeah, spend cool. more time <laughs> if that's the focus. Improving your yeah. workflow yeah, yeah, yeah. than actually Working. making music. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it is addictive. That Just, is my life. We were, we were talking about the template. It's so like, I could spend hours. Yeah. Just in the template and just being like, oh, you know what? If I route this and I could do, the, and then I'll find a, a program. I just got this, uh, it's called Divisimate. Whoa. That basically is able to take incoming MIDI notes. I can play a chord. Uh, so these are all orchestral instruments mm -hmm. that are legato. Like they can't, you can't play a chord with any of them. Mm -hmm. So Divisimate is able to take incoming MIDI and automatically split up each note. Yep. There we go. Oh gosh, the sounds are so good. <laughs> is that sp a Spitfire? This is, so this is all, uh, this has been a thing that I've been getting into this, just this year is physical modeling. So there's no samples. What? It is all computers doing math. I don't even understand. So you told me that on the phone. I'm like, I don't, even, uh -huh. I don't know what you're saying. God, it sounds so good. I'm just, I'm really enamored with the physical modeling stuff because you're literally making like a computer sing. sing. Yeah, yeah. Like you're, t this is, you know, uh, sand. It's a rock, a yeah, computer yeah. with electricity running through it. And with physical modeling, it is generating the sound. And there's something really romantic about that. I love samples too. Samples are incredible. But I think now we're at the point with computing power where this is how many instances? I don't, I don't even understand. You're, so like when you are doing this physical modeling, like what do you load on the logic track? So this is a company out of Italy called Audio Modeling. And this is their clarinet. With sampling, you have to deal with key switches. So if you want to play something that is and then go to, you have to enable a key switch. Okay. But with modeling, there's no key switches. You can just play the thing 
while I do, you know, have a workflow set up for key switches, this is just so much more fun. If the sound is convincing enough, especially once it's in a mix, mm -hmm. I think it sounds really cool. Well, that's all you need, and uh, I'm I'm real happy with uh, some of the companies that I've found. I know IK Multimedia has the Moto Bass stuff, which is physical modeling for a bass guitar. What I was understanding is like you were running some computer program. Yes. And playing the computer program and it's doing math. But now what I'm thinking is there's products yes. that do the physical modeling and Absolutely. you load them. Okay. Yes. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it. it acts, so it's like a VST. It acts like just any other virtual instrument. Yep. Um, I know that there... That's crazy. There are some... There are plugins out there that only make the sound that you tell it to with yeah. phys physical modeling. Applied Acoustic Systems, I think is one, has an uh, instrument called Chromophone. Rather than saying like, here's a clarinet for you to play, mm -hmm. they say, well, we can model a string, we can model the resonance of a drum head, we can model a mallet, and you know, how, how all these things can interact and you can essentially build you could make this if you wanted to. It would take a very <laughs> long time. Sure, yeah. And a lot of trial and error. So I'm very grateful for companies like this that... So this one's called SWAM? SWAM, which is an acronym for yeah. something. But uh, yeah, they've got like a full orchestra. For strings, I'm actually using a company that's kind of adjacent. Okay. which is kind of a, a best of both worlds sort of thing, mm -hmm. where they are using samples and impulse responses to get the timbre and the general sound mm -hmm. of the instrument, but then using a pseudo physical modeling or synthesis to like bridge the gap between like, samples are good at this, physical modeling is good at this, let's take the weak points of both and create an ultra real but ultra flexible VST. So sample modeling's strings I'm really happy with. Heck yeah, can I hear a little bit of it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs>so you are using this as an instrument essentially with yeah. your performance so this is i've got vibrato oh nice and then this is general expression so yeah. you can ride these and some folks will do it with their feet yep. they'll have like two yeah uh some folks i want to try out the uh like a breath controller Whoa. Which is like an old like Backstreet Boys yeah, style yeah, yeah. thing that comes around and you can actually control those things. It's like the position of your head. Whoa. I'm sure you look ridiculous yeah, yeah, yeah. doing it, but supposedly that is like, if you want ultra expressive, that's the way to do it. I've had this long history of like, let me try to get out of the box. Yeah. And let me try to work in the sampler world. And I can, but I'm just so much faster like on a computer with all the strings and the horns and, and things like that, obviously those are very useful for the composing stuff. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the approach that I've brought into the, like the indoor cat stuff is, you know, it, it, it can be tricky crate digging and sampling existing work to then, you know, be used in a commercial setting. I use these instruments to essentially create the sample. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like yeah, you were saying, yeah, it yeah. seems like you're starting from a traditional place and then putting in the in the beat. That's kind of what I'm doing exactly, where I'm going to create something that hopefully sounds Musical. of a different time, of yeah. a different era. Yeah, I get mad Stevie Wonder vibes. I'll t you know what? I'll take it. Yeah. Uh, cannot... Chop it up and <laughs> throw it into a beat, you know? <laughs> yeah can't play keys <laughs> quite in the same way. But give me time, I can, uh, I, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm very uh, enamored with m music from different time periods. I, I grew up in a really specific uh, house where I could only listen to like very Christian music. Oh, interesting. So there was, there was a lot of uh, musical vocabulary musical history that I like missed, missed out, out on. Yeah, yeah, same here. Uh, yeah, I didn't yeah. hear the, the Beach Boys until I was 18. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And so I kind of, you know, <clears throat> I've, I've felt 
in my adult life, like, man, I've got it. There's so much music oh, out there. Yeah. I've got to face Steely Dan. Gotta catch, I got to listen to Steely Dan. <laughs> you got to catch up on. Yeah. Uh, so that's lately I've just been listening to a ton of Bossa Nova. Probably going to make some Bossa Nova inspired stuff. Heck yeah. Uh, Do you have any advice for young musicians who are trying to find their way? I mean, so many of them are already doing it. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. that's, I'm so inspired by just 16 year olds. Uh, when I, I remember when I was 16, I was using a computer and I was the weird one. Yeah. For, you know, showing up at a, at a show and we had tracks and, and loops and things like that. And people would always cross their arms and be like, I don't know if that's, allowed. <laughs> They're cheating. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and now it's just the embracing of technology, of just these tools are able to, you're able to make so much. I, I guess for me, it's like, don't be afraid to make something that you like, yeah. you know, rather than something that you perceive other people will like. With the caveat of, you know, what what do you want to get out of music? Like yeah. there is a, you know, if you're creating something for other people to consume, mm. you know, there obviously is an element of, well, I can't just, you know, record myself banging on a garage door, Yeah. but maybe you could. Like yeah. what is the way to record yourself banging on a garage door that people would be like, you know what, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that. Yeah. Like when you can sit back and just be like, you know what? I don't care if anybody else likes this. This yeah. is mine. Uh, so yeah, I guess start there. Like make yourself happy first. What's interesting to me about the licensing world is like mm -hmm. you can do that and you can do whatever else you want. Yep. So you can you can sort of compartmentalize like the here's for them. Yep. Here's for me and the the thing for them will always deposit on every quarterly. You know, and I don't that yeah. doesn't have to be me. That's just a thing I made that is this thing. Yeah. And it serves its purpose and it works great on Epic Studio Tours. And uh well, yeah. you know, maybe me is this other thing or maybe sometimes I'm a bunch of different things. Well, yeah, and and the thing that's for them, like if it burns you out, don't do it. Yeah. Don't do it. Yeah. Like if you, if it sucks the life out of you, figure out another thing. Yeah. Like if you are trying, you know, if you are saying like, I want this to be a career, I want to pursue this and, and do this for years and years, you are going to have to do stuff for them, but you can find stuff that you genuinely love. And then you're right. It can fuel, then you can go bang on a garage door. Yeah, dude. <laughs> All you want. Well, this is awesome. I would love to just be your intern and watch <laughs> you work on Logic because yeah. Logic is so, every time I see people who are like exclusive to it and are super fast. It, it's very um, desirable to me. Like I'm like, man, I I wish I could just. I mean, I could. Yeah. Oh, dude. Divorce it's divorce Pro Tools and just go ex get exclusive with Logic and figure out how to. If there's there's like two things, if I could figure out those two things in Logic, then I'd be good. Then you'd be. Then you could go. Oh, dude, it's all I've ever used. Is is Logic? I had to get Pro Tools because someone sent me an, an AAF yeah. earlier this year. And you can open them in Logic, mm -hmm. but if they were made in Pro Tools, you kind of need Pro Tools. So mm -hmm. I, I got a, a month of Pro Tools and opened it up and immediately. <laughs> like, I hate this. <laughs> this is not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've used Logic for f 14 years. Yeah. And to open up another DAW yeah. and immediately feel like, I don't think I can make a single piece of music yeah in this space is so refreshing. Uh, yeah. It's very like disarming. What, uh, do you have any new projects coming out? People can go check out? We. Upcoming releases? Yeah, I am, right now I'm working on an Indoor Cat EP that should be out in January. I try to do, you know, every couple months, yeah. just try out, try out some new stuff and, and put it out. So in January, I just put out a Christmas song. I just did. Oh, nice. Did a, my take on Jingle Bells. Oh, cool. So that's, that's on Spotify right now. What's the show you're doing? I can't, can't tell you. You can't say, oh, okay, all right. <laughs> but it, it'll be on Netflix in 2023. And if you have a three-year-old, they right will, up your alley. they'll probably like it. Heck yeah, dude. <laughs> that's, well, I appreciate you letting me do this. I've been looking forward to coming here and yeah, geeking out on your setup. And I love, I love any time there's a new release on Music Bed and I can throw it in. They work so well for my little intros that I do. And all right, well, uh, everybody, Go follow Jacob. I'll put links in the description and uh, we'll see you later.